everybody. This is Terry from Sweet Pea Papers and the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. And um, I've lost my timer. There it is. <laughs> um, it, I'm also running the uh, Sweet Pea Papers, like I said, Facebook group and the Junk Journal Tutorials and more Facebook group. And now I've opened a Ko-Fi shop. Well, I've had it open for a while, but all I had was some tutorials in there. But now I've started... Um, putting in um, larger tutorials that are specific only to Ko-Fi and Ko-Fi members. Um, they're two different things. Um, you get a discount if you're a member or you may get it for free depending on what you know level of membership you are or you can still just buy it at the Ko-Fi shop. So um, that's uh, ko-fi.com forward slash sweet pea papers. All this stuff is going to be below the video. Now this is something that I did in uh, 2021, I believe, and then never revisited it. So um, it comes with a full tutorial on how to put this folder together. As you can see, I was still making notes. Um, but it's got, let's see if I can do it. Oh, yeah, let's undo that. It's got photos, step-by-step -step photos on how to put this one together. And so if you want that, I will locate this file and I will add it to the Sweet Pea Papers Junk Journal Group and the Junk Journal Tutorials and more Junk Journal Group so that you can make this prototype. Now, um, when we looked at this in the videos before, I had made this prototype and it opens like this. It's a monster. It opens like this, then like this. Oh, these are not flip flapped. Let's see if we can do it backwards. Let me. Okay. Let's see if I can get this. I think those have to go together. That doesn't work, does it? Okay, this is close to what it's supposed to go. Um, so, starting again, you've got A, which is your large front cover. Now, um, well, anyway, let's just look at this real quick. And then A as the back. Now, we're going to number ours differently this time. Um, I've lost my pencil. Unbelievable. All right, let's just use this eraser. So what we're going to do is we're going to do A2 that way um, because we're going to need to number them as well. But so we had A, then we have B. Yeah, see, this is all jumbled up. Let's we'll just see. Yeah, see they're not labeled in order. Okay, let's just do this. So it opens like this, then this, then this, then this, then apparently these two together, and this, and then this, and then this opens out, a little flip out. And they're all paper clipped together on the gusset, which we'll talk about in just a second. Then this one, and this one, and this one, then this one. And then you get all the way at that point, if the paper clip was still in the right place, you would get all the way down. 
to the ginormous middle of the back. And this is going to be 8 inches wide by... Oh, I've got another pencil in here. Um, 8 inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall. Now, obviously, um, I don't really want to do 8 inches wide because the size papers we're going to be working with, we are going to be working with an 8 and a half by 11, so we could still do the back as an 8 and a half by 11 and make a ginormous ephemera envelope for the back and maybe another envelope on the front of it. Um, we could do something like that. Or we could, these are our page sizes. So as you can see, that gets swallowed up right there. So we wouldn't be able to use it there unless we had shortened and narrowed the uh, lap book, which I think is going to make it too small. So I'm thinking maybe we can go somewhere in between. Plus, you'll notice something with them all having the same 3 quarter inch gusset then they all lay right flat next to each other. So I'm not sure that's really going to work out. What if you put something on there, then it's going to make it stick out from here. Do you see what I mean? So I think we should play with the uh, gusset, which is this part in the center that's been scored on either side. There's a built-in gusset on a manila folder. Get a full one here. Now all I have left are legal sized. I've used up all of my regular sized ones, so we're just going to have to take a look at a legal size. If you look closely, my camera is going to freak out. If you look closely, there's three lines on this side there. You can see that one right there. And the regular fold, like when you're folding it in half, well, that gives you a little bit more. And then there's, oops, sorry. And then there's one fold on this side. I have to stop moving so the camera can focus. Okay, so now that you're blinded by the blurriness, um, and depending on where you fold them, that gives you how wide your gusset's going to be. So you've got one quarter, half, and three quarters on this side, and you've got one quarter on this side, plus of course you can score it anywhere you want to make your own. But since we have these legal size ones, we can cut these to whatever size we want as well. Um, I'm thinking maybe instead of an 8 inch back, maybe a 6 inch back um, by uh, 9, 6 by 9. Then we could actually use a 6 by 9 envelope in the back instead of having to make an expandable envelope. Um, that opens up a little more options for us. So, uh, yeah. So now back when I had made this proto, prototype, proto, okay, let's just close it up. I don't know how they flipped and flapped anymore. It was three years ago and there's all paper clipped together. Um, I do know A went over B. I do know that much. So once I had made this, then I duplicated it. That's one good way to lose a ruler. Then I duplicated it in a four video series. Um, and that, I'll put a link to that too if you want to see, see that and see how I came up with this painted version. Um, it's just like this one, only I took it all apart and painted <laughs> all the edges. So let's take a look at this one. And you'll see what I mean. I used um, paint instead of ink on this. Didn't really have um, a kit in mind. Yeah, so you can see how it flip flapped. So these two were together in order. Yeah, see this one has, has been unflipped and flapped as well. Um, but I took them all apart and painted them with acrylic paint. And I used um, 
burnt sienna around the pages then on the outside pages to make it look more like a book with a um, binding I used burnt umber on the edges now I'm thinking maybe white depending on what kit we use or inking and stenciling which is just going to be insane or uh, leaving it plain I, I'm not sure yet so let's take a look at some manila folders and just kind of goof around for a little bit and see what we can see well let's move the two prototypes out of the way uh, let's get my paper trimmer it's over on the floor I was doing some photos let me move these two over there move this over there so I know to look it up I think I found it on my backup hard drive where I put all of my video tutorials and stuff it's full I have to get another one so I have eight terabytes <laughs> of videos that's 900 videos for you um, that's what that'll do so what you really ideally want are center folds or center tabs let's see For the base and that's because oh it's not going to matter it isn't going to matter because we're going to cut them down and we're going to have to cut them from the gusset and I haven't picked out a kit yet as you can see my trays are empty. These papers that I'm using for examples are from the Bluebells papers from Victoria Designs. And um, that's the most recent tutorial I did. It's on the Ko-Fi um, page because it's for members only. But you can see the free flip through on, the, on my YouTube channel at Sweet Bee Papers. So um, they're very pretty papers. Uh, let's see. So, if we're going to use this, we've got the gusset right there. It's right there. In the center. Another gusset. Another gu gusset line. And another gusset line. Can you see them now? Yes. Okay, so if we're going to take the gussets into account, then we're going to need to figure out our measurements from the gusset either way out because the gussets are going to be flat. So if you just cut it from the center line out eight inches, let's say, then you make a gusset, then this side's going to be shorter than this side might be fine for you if that's what you want on your base but um, I think that it would be better on the base to have them the same size because we're going to overlap them to create the lap book and having them the same size is usually pretty good for overlapping okay so now we know that these pages are we know I think they're seven and a half once you trim them. I mean, they're five and three eighths once you trim them. I believe it's. And they're eight and a quarter tall. Oh, I know. The other one is for the UK papers with the big border on the top and the bottom. All right. So we've got eight and a quarter by five and three eighths. Now you want to add a quarter of an inch on. Let me get my handy dandy scratch pad here. I think we're gonna need a, a new page. I took my medicine before we started and then forgot to turn the timer off. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to have 
I will eventually write on the back of that. I won't waste it, but uh, for right now, I need something flat. Okay, so we've got five and three eighths plus a quarter is five and five eighths wide from either side of the gusset. Um, and we're going to have to adjust, well, we're going to be using scraps and cutting off sizes, you know, to make different sizes and all that. So right now we're just going to worry about the base. So we get five and five eighths wide by eight and a quarter. And that's going to be eight and a half tall. So that's nowhere near as big as the prototype. <coughs> Excuse me. As the prototype that we just looked at. That was, um, I don't know, an adventure in stupidity or something. That was way back when I first started and I'm not sure I really realized about the paper sizes and things. Might have been going to use eight and a half by 11s to paper the bigger outside papers or, or uh, pages and then used all the smaller pieces inside for the smaller papers. However, a lot of those were eight and a half by 10 and you know, stuff that you would have still had to use the backing papers for. So I'm pretty sure that we're gonna use a Victoria Design Kit. A, because I just acquired several. Thank you for your donations. And um, because that's kind of an expensive part of what I do because I really love their kits because you get so many papers just hands down so many papers I've done three journals out of this one bluebells kit without reprinting anything just from the pr initial printout two full folios and then I've got some left and I'm gonna make a small folio I think anyway so that's probably what we're going to use. I don't know which one, hence I don't know which color, but I do know my sizes. Okay, so I know this. That I know. All I have to worry about after that is my uh, borders, my edges. What, what am I going to do with the edges? And how the heck am I going to label it so that I can get everything back together in the right place? when I get done. Now, photos may help. You may want to take a photo of each stage and then refer back to your photos so that you know what went where. Um, I may do that after we get done. I may, you know, open each thing and take a picture. The other one, I think I took pictures as I built it. I'm not really sure. Um, and I'm not sure we're going to do photos at all, um, except for the uh, photo album when everything is done, because I always make a photo album for each project. Anywho, we got five and five eighths by eight and a half. So now if we made the widths, if we made this six by nine, well, then we'd never be able to use any of these, would we? All right, so we'll just make our own um, thing for the back, or we'll make something different. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I like to put a big ephemera folder in, though, because I always have a ton of ephemera left over. And I think it's kind of fun to give it to the person that gets the book, because then if they feel like it's too Spartan, because I tend to make books that don't have a lot of ephemera in them, then uh, they have ephemera that they can add. Um, or they've just got the extra ephemera to look at if that's all they want to do. So this is our basic measurements. These are our basic page. With border. Ran out of paper. I write too big. It's funny, my friends tell me how small I write on my to-do lists because I used to do um, drafting. I can write little tiny square letters 
<laughs> basic page with one quarter inch border. No, one, we want to put one eighth. It's going to be one eighth all the way around with one eighth inch border. I still almost didn't fit it on there. Okay, so that's that. So now that means we want to make the outside or the width five and five eighths from the gussets and eight and a half tall. So let's try it out and see what we get. So now let's start with the widest gusset. Remember we're going to make them different sizes this time, the gussets, so that we have space to put things in between. Some things we may put on the same gusset size because it doesn't matter. And um, yeah. So I have no idea. I'm just winging this, just so you guys know. So if we go from the center fold, <laughs> the center fold, woohoo, hubba hubba. The center fold, which is the, the regular factory fold, and we go over to the third gusset, that's going to give us a line or an edge here and so we're going to want to measure um, and then that's going to give us this fold here we're ignoring the one the gusset on this side for now So that's going to give us this uneven size. The, this gusset is made for when, let me see if I can get this on, under the camera. Oops, my light's off. Oh, come on. It's not coming back on. Huh. Okay, I'll worry about it later instead of tapping the camera. All right. So this gusset right there is made for when you've got a lot of papers in your folder and instead of just the kind of a pointy bottom, you need it to have a flat bottom to hold all the pages. That's all that is. So it wasn't meant for us. <laughs> it wasn't put there handy just for us. So then we're going to take from this side of the gusset and we're going to measure out five and five eighths. And then we're going to go from this side of the gusset and go out five and five eighths. The first thing we're going to do, however, is we're going to measure eight and a half in height. Otherwise, we're never going to get it in our paper trimmer. So we need to cut off the eight and a half inches for the height and then do the five and five eighths from each side of the gusset. So let me try that and let's see what it looks like. eight and a half, right? Okay. Save these for goodness sakes. Five, five, and five eighths from each side. So don't just put it in like this, like I almost did. Open it up and let's measure five and five eighths. Five and five eighths from this side. 
then from this gusset over here How did I do that? Oh, that's the mark on the other side. Okay. And then five and five eighths out from this gusset here, edge, this gusset edge from here. Five. Two, four, five, eights. And then we'll cut it there. Now remember, that's not including our three-quarter inch gusset. And I don't want to draw it right in the gusset because then if we go to ink or do something, then the writing will be there. And when you go to erase on a manila folder, it doesn't um, erase all the way, I've found. It's really making me crazy now. Where is my pencil? Where is my pencil? I really would like to know. So it doesn't have the sticker on it. That's my backup. Anyway, I just like it. It matches my pen. It's a 2.0 lead. <laughs> I'm a funny person. Funny, funny, as an odd. And then we'll see how big of a folio that gives us. Not near as big as the other one, huh? But we're going to have the gusset. How is that not the same size? We measured from the gusset. Oh, it is the same size. Okay. So now when we we need two of these. That's why it doesn't look very big. So we need five and five eighths out from this one. Let's fold. And five and five eighths out from this one. Just tall. That gives us another one of these. And now that I have the height, I'm going to open it up and cut it on the two lines. That gives us these three pieces. This one's a good ta uh, tab template. These two are good for miscellaneous pieces to fold in half or to make into pockets. So now, what I want, is not what I'm going to get. So, what we're going to do, we have to overlap these. First we have to make the gusset on this side.
Okay, so then we're going to, let's label this one A, this one B, just to make it easy. We're going to open them up and we're going to put the top of B over the bottom or the back of A. So this is going to be A1 and then there's going to be all kinds of pages in between so we don't know what this is going to be except for we know it's going to be A and we won't see that. We're going to put this one over this one and we're going to line it up at the gusset not the center original fold but at the edge of that middle gusset. Now when we do that that gives us that 5 and 5 eighths width and then it also gives us a pocket on the back which is right here it'll be even with that so once we know which one we're going to put on top and which one we're going to put on the bottom we can actually trim this back a little bit and put a thumb, thumb notch in it and have a great big pocket in the back. Okay, so let's go ahead, since we already know we're going to do that, this is going to be our bottom back piece. So let's take an inch off. Now, I'm not writing this down, so there's not going to be any typed up directions with this one. I'm take an inch off. Then I'm going to take my hole or my thumb, my circle punch, excuse me. And in fact, I'm going to use bigger than my one. I think I'm going to use my one and a half. And I'm going to go in. I didn't mark this one for the center equal sides. Okay, that'll give it, that'll give me something. Halfway in, equal, equal. Okay. So that gives us our big thumb hole. So now when we glue these together, we'll put the glue on the back one. And we'll close it up and we'll have this opening and we'll have a thumb hole. Now, I just realized at this point I need to know what kit because I need to either put paper down now before we glue it together no, because we're going to have a border anyway. So we can slide a piece of paper in if we decide to do that. Or we can ink everything after we glue these two together. Mm -mm, that's not going to work. We're going to have to resort to paper clips. I think what we're going to do is we will do a pause after each section. Once I've decided the kit, which apparently I have to do now, um, and then do the borders and the, and the gussets and things. Because if we don't, then we're going to have a big giant mess like on the other one. So... Let me, I'm going to end part A of this video here, then I will pick out the papers and print them out and then decide what I'm going to do with the edges and then I will be back. But this is the beginning base of our folio, okay, our lap book, our manila folder lap book. Okay, a small one. Not necessarily small in pages, but smaller in size. Okay, all right, I'll see you in the second half of the video. 
All right, we're back, and look, there's nothing. I've thrown it all away. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, so in the amount of time that it took me to uh, ink, and yes, I decided to stencil, uh, silly me, um, the manila folders, and we'll talk about that in a second, I printed out all the papers on one side. Now, I still have it printed on the other side. I decided to go with Gothic Circus, and um, just because I thought it would be fun to have a circus theme for a, a lamp book, why not? And so these papers are just gorgeous. And I love them, love them, love them. We're not going to go through all of them because there's um, 50 of them, I think. By the time we get through, we've got 24 of these, which we'll cut in half, and that'll give us 48. Um, yeah, look at that tiger. All right, so we've got those. Then we've got, let me show you the... This is the original. This is the original. Now look how large these are compared to our project. Hmm. What will we do? Well, we're going to use some of them as paper dolls, maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and print on the back as if we might use them. But what I did was I put them two to a page. got black ink on them. Oh, I've used black ink. I've washed my hands twice. So just be resigned to the fact if you use black soot that you are going to have black soot on your hands until you're done and probably a couple days after. So anyway, I printed these together. So this one's this one, this one's that one. So two to a page, five by seven. So now these are small enough that we can cut them out and use them and glue them to the pages in the papers of the um, book. Okay. So, let's see. Let's put these over here. Then we've got the, these are all upside down. Then we've got all of these, which are our um, 8.5 by 11 papers. And these are gorgeous as well. Uh, it's too bad that I didn't, you know, make it tall. Um, there's a possibility of putting some tall on one side, but I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, um, there's several backing pages. This page can be cut down into cards if we want to, if we need to. Um, we may be able to just use this section here like this. You never know. I love that. Don't know what we're going to do with it. See, and I don't know what we would do with a page like this anyway. I mean, even if we... We could shrink it down a little bit and try to make it fit the cover. That would be pretty cool, except none of these portrays circus to me. So, you know, so here's another one of the backing papers. And what I wanted to get to was... the fact <laughs> that back in here somewhere are horizontal pages. So this kit comes with both. I like that paper. There we are. Both vertical and horizontal pages. 
this would make a nice cover. You could cut it in half. This is probably the center. You could probably cut it right down here. Put half on the front, half on the back. Except that wouldn't work. But, um, because I went ahead and made everything crazy. So, yeah. So there's that. Then there's the ephemera. This is the stuff I have to print. Um, with the back as just cream colored. This one and this one I have to print with something special on the back so that the insides of these little manila folder, these little fake folders, um, are interesting. And the same with the envelopes. So those two are going to be separate. My little trays are getting anxious to be filled. These are drawer divider sorting things, in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, I'm going to set those to the side over there. These I don't have to print on the back of. I've got enough bigger ones of these. Oh, there's elephant, though. Hmm. Maybe I will print on the back of it. That could be a card. I'll just print on the back of all of them. Here's some more ephemera. I like these free tickets and card tricks. I like all the ephemera, actually. The ephemera is awesome in this kit. Get this out of the way here. Sorry about that noise. I just realized what I did. Anyway, the ephemera is awesome on this. These are pockets. I just love it. I think this is going to be great. I hope so anyway. I might print out a smaller version of this as well. That way they, we have them about this size. Here's some more cards, so we may not need to cut that page up into cards. See, and even more cards. And then a smaller envelope, which I'm not going to worry about printing a pattern on, because then a pattern would be on the back of all of these, t these tags and then you wouldn't be able to write on them. Okay? So that's it for the papers. Oh, no, it's not. What did I do with them? Oh, here they are. So now there's these. Victoria Designs also makes a, make, makes a kit um, that's just called Gothic Circus Papers. So I went ahead and got it because it was on sale for... I don't know, 60% off or something, and it made it like $2. So there's these. I like this one. I like this one. I don't know how we'd ever get both, you know, both parts in. Then there's this one, which I'm not sure we would use. This one I love. And then we have this one, which I really like, too. So we have these extras that we need to print on the back of as well. So I'm still um, halfway done printing is all. So let me set all of this to the side. Okay. So this is what I did. Okay, I'm expecting a call. That was why I abruptly stopped that sentence that I was saying that I don't remember what it was. Um, you'll notice I have a lot more papers. Um, these are the ones that um, we originally had that were the 5 and 5 eighths by 8 and a half. 
I looked at them and I thought, boy, those sure look a little small for being the whole book. So what I did was I made some six inch by eight and a half inch papers. Yes, that means I had to ink some more. And with the hole for the, the thumb hole, it worked out just pretty good that there was a rose right there. And then I'm going to um, keep most of this as stencil as well. And then we're going to put paper here um, and make a pocket out of it. So these we're going to go ahead and put in as well. Even though they're smaller, there's one with a thumb hole and we'll make a pocket out of that. Um, eventually not in this video we're not going to do anything else actually in this video I just wanted to show you how I stenciled everything and then I had to make some more and I made them six inches by eight and a half so that's a little bit bigger just a little bit half an inch bigger and it just seems to make all the difference so, um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this video, and I will see you in the next video, and that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay, bye-bye.